This looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I'm guessing that a few of you are wondering, what is this Frankenstein looking thing? Two things that need to get out of the way. Number one, this is not a how-to video. And number two, if you're a refrigeration mechanic, you're bound to be disappointed. Other than that, I'm ready to go. At least I think I am. My name's Blake Pizzi. Thanks for joining this episode. So that's my neighbor Dave, actually friend Dave, but friend before neighbor. Anyways, he's now my neighbor. He helped me carry this guy downstairs. And I'm sure most of you are thinking that looks a little more familiar. And you're right, this guy's commonly referred to as an air conditioning unit. Just before we get into installing these two guys, just give me two minutes of your time here. I'd like to explain to you just the basics of a refrigeration or an air conditioning system. I think it would be a lot more interesting for you if you just have somewhat of an idea of how the system operates. Okay, now think of your air conditioning system as a simple loop of copper pipe that runs into your home and out of your home. We're gonna fill this copper pipe with refrigerant, which is just a fluid. We're just moving heat in and out of the refrigerant. There are four key components of a refrigeration system. Number one, the compressor. Number two, the condenser. Number three, the metering device. Number four, the evaporator. So let's take a peek and I'll show you what they look like. I'll take this fan and the motor out. So the condensing unit houses two key components. Number one, the compressor. Number two, the condenser. First look at the compressor. We're keeping it really simple. All you need to know is the compressor increases the pressure. That's it. Moving on to the condenser. It's a heat rejector. All it's trying to do is to get rid of any heat in the refrigerant. So the pressurized refrigerant leaves the compressor and is distributed into the condenser. So this air-cooled condenser, the fan lives on top. It's drawing air upwards. So outdoor air enters the condenser, passes over these aluminum fins, picking up heat from the refrigerant. Hopefully I'm going quick enough and that I haven't lost it yet. Let's keep going. The refrigerant is gonna leave the outdoor condensing unit. It's gonna enter your room by way of some copper pipe. The refrigerant will then pass through the third key component, which is the metering device. It's this cool looking guy here. All you need to remember is that this guy's decreasing the pressure. It's a pressure dropper. As that pressure drops in the refrigerant, so does the temperature. So that cold refrigerant then goes to our fourth key component, which is the evaporator. You're probably thinking it looks very similar to the condenser. That's because it is a heat exchanger and it's doing something very similar. Here we were rejecting heat, whereas with the evaporator, we're absorbing the heat. This guy's often referred to as a coil. The way it works is that the blower in your air handling unit or your furnace blowing air through through the coil, through the aluminum fins, and that refrigerant is grabbing all the heat that it can, leaves the coil here, right through the cycle all again. That's it. Hopefully I made sense there. Thanks for watching that, it's kind of fun. to get the coil in the air handler. Place it right in here somewhere. Humidifier bypass is a little in the way. Guess I'll move that up, but can't access through here. Venting is in the way. So I'm gonna have to squeeze it in here, but then I'm gonna have to come through underneath the stairs. It's gonna be a little tight, but let's see what we can do. gloves. Now yeah, I'm thinking 
See that? We did here. Time to make some shelves for the evaporator to sit on. So that plastic drain pan on the evaporator comes out right here. I'm trying to get a slight slope this way and a slight slope this way. If any, just barely. Okay, so you can see the shelf is in. Plop the coil on top of it. Hopefully you can squeeze it in through here. Let's go grab it. don't get how guys can do this in one day. I think uh, the whole thing, for me, not gonna be the case. I see why people hire it out, that's for sure. I just hope that coil's still pressurized and uh, I haven't caused a leak. inside I'm gonna start actually piping now this is where it gets a little scary i'm gonna try to dry fit it all tonight and tomorrow i'm gonna borrow an acetylene torch hopefully i do an okay job here now inside this pipe it is a critical environment so i do need to take care to make sure that no burrs or contaminants do get in there it could clog up my metering device or even chew up the compressor try my best hopefully i don't get ripped apart too hard down in those comments below Tempted to call it quits. I've wanted to go kiting in that lake for so long. I think it's time. It's pretty gusty. Not the 
cleanest win, but it sounds like more fun than this. was an epic fail. By the time I blew up the kite, got my lines on, got the kite up in the air, the wind just absolutely died. Police ended up coming. Somebody called the cops, but he was very friendly. No ticket, just a little warning, and he actually quite liked it, so really friendly guy. Anyways, never be able to do that again, but figured I'd give it a shot. Wish it was a little more windy. Just whispering here. Don't quite have the confidence yet to do this, whatever this is, vlogging. Neighbors got their window open. I mean, let's be honest, at this point, this is pretty embarrassing, but it's fun. So let's carry on and uh, try to get this piped in so this weekend I can actually get this thing turned on. So this is Jordan, my buddy from work. He's come out, he's giving me a hand here, just wrapping this system up. Although I would like to tackle this myself, just the amount of tools that you need costs more than hiring someone to do it. So right now, Jordan's inside welding and we've just got nitrogen in this bottle, which is flowing into his regulator and out. You can see the nitrogen is entering the suction line, runs through the whole system, comes back through the liquid line and leaves right here on the service port. If you take a look at the welds that we've completed, you can see why you run nitrogen through. You don't want oxygen inside of the pipe, otherwise it will oxidize and create a bunch of contaminants, which will then be run and caught in your system. So that's why we're running nitrogen while we're brazing. We're almost done welding. Once we're done welding, hook up the vacuum pump, pull a vacuum on the system so we can then charge with refrigerant. So we just soap this. I had a small leak which I don't think we would have caught with the gauges in our pressure test. It's a good thing we did. Let's see if we fix it though. Vacuum's done. We're done. Jordan just left. So glad I got his help. What a guy. I don't think I could have done it without him, to be honest. 
Before we wrap this up, let's just go read some temperature. I'm gonna try to figure out the temperature difference across the coil. So the coil lives right here. We're gonna read on the return side and then afterwards one on the supply side. So on the return side, we're getting about 18.3, 64. Sounds about right. I think we should be getting around 65 to 75. And leaving the coil, we got 43 Fahrenheit, 6.3 Celsius. Looking like about a 20 degree TD, which is healthy and what we wanted. That's it, project complete. Hope you don't mind this episode. We took a quick break from the shop build, but don't you worry, we're coming back to the shop. Living in Canada and in Northern Alberta, we got a long, dark, cold winter. I'm gonna be spending a lot of my time down here building furniture. We've got a huge build list to tackle together. But for now, I do need to take care of some landscaping. So we'll see what video comes next. But thanks for joining today, and I'll see you in the next episode.